Revelation 21, 1 through 7. Hallelujah. There's a new heaven and a new earth coming. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name, yes. Jesus. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation 21, 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God reads as follows. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. God's heaven and God's earth is going to be far much greater than our heaven that we uh, see when we look up. And it's going to be great. The earth is going to be much greater than the earth that we are living in. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more. Hallelujah. No more sea. Wow. 90, I think it's 91 or 97 percent, 91 percent of, of uh, the waters, our oceans uh, are on the surface of this earth. And you know, it's amazing, but we can't drink it. That's right. We can't drink it. And almost 97, 91 or 97 percent, I think I read that recently, 91, 97 percent of the water is salt water ocean water and it's deep two miles down most places two miles down and yet and yet we can't drink it it's only i think like one percent of that is what is that that, that was what we drink fresh water but here the bible says that uh, uh, that there would be no more sea no more sea and i john saw the holy city John saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Wow. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. Amen. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Amen. And he that sat upon the throne said. Behold. I make all things new. Yeah. And he said unto me. Right. For these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Wow. What a tremendous yes. promise. Lift your hands with me. Amen. Let's just Hallelujah. thank the Lord for his great and mighty promises. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, today. You are so good. Yes. You are so kind. You are so merciful and so loving, Lord. Not only have you blessed us here while we have uh, while we live here on this earth, Lord. Hallelujah. And there's so many things that we can we can give thanks for, Jesus. But uh, you've got a greater, a greater, greater promises, greater, yes. greater things ahead, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This Hallelujah. is just the beginning yeah. that we are experiencing here on earth. Praise but there is something Hallelujah. greater ahead for us, Lord. Yeah. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the, after the rapture of the church. Wow. He's going to pick up his church. And those who have been born again will go to the judgment seat of Christ. Those who are born again. Hallelujah. We need to, we need to, we need to instruct people. We need to lead people into repentance. Baptism in the name of Jesus for the infilling of, in the, infilling of the Holy Ghost. So that they can get into the kingdom. Amen. And then teach them how to live. Praise God in the kingdom. But, but uh, those who have been born again are going to go into the judgment seat of Christ. Yep. 
Then we will be ushered into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then finally, there's a lot of uh, other things going on. Yeah. Uh, after the, 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 the supper of the Lamb, there will be a, uh, the millennial period here on earth. But the Bible does say after this, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. In John, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. Hallelujah. I was reading this and it's interesting how they're talking about a, a, some uh, 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 comet, I guess it is, or uh, the, some star from a, some, something from a far distance that is, that is coming closer to the earth and if, it, and, if it, and if it crashes into the earth, it'll destroy the whole earth, you know? But, uh, well, God's, God's way of doing things is, is beyond man's way of, of uh, considering things. And, and here the word of God tells us in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night mm -hmm. in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Mm -hmm. See then that all that these Seeing then that all these things shall dis be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall, be, shall melt with fervent heat. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heaven, and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherefore, beloved, see that you look for such things. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. And because our God is holy, he's going to take us to live in a holy place. Amen. This earth is not holy. This heaven is not holy. Amen. Matter of fact, it's smoggy. And, uh, and, and, and there's, there's, there's a, an atmosphere of evil and wickedness. You can feel it in certain areas of our of town here in, Ro in, in, uh, in uh, Rosenberg. Uh, but this place where God is preparing for us there is no sin. The first heaven and the first earth will pass away and there will be no more sea. No more sea. John saw the holy city, the, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Wow. We're only 30, 38,000 here in Rosenberg. That's very a small amount of people. 38,000 people. Uh, Houston, by itself, the city of Houston, is around 4 million people. We're only 37, 38,000 here in Rosenberg. And uh, wow, we're a small city. Yeah. Rosenberg, small city. And uh, can you imagine? We're talking about the New Jerusalem. Uh, when I, I gave some statistics on the New Jerusalem some time back at a funeral somewhere. It's amazing. You can read about it in the book of Revelation. You keep reading through this chapter. I'm not going to get get to. I'm not going to get there. But if you keep reading, you'll find the, the 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 measurements, the width, the height, the length, the depth of the city, the New Jerusalem. And uh, but John saw the, the 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 New Jerusalem, the 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 holy city coming down from God out of heaven. Can you imagine looking up and then seeing a a city? Hallelujah. Wow. Coming down from heaven. What an experience he had. My Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the new Jerusalem was, came down from heaven. And in verse 11 of the same chapter, Revelation chapter 21, verse 11, John writes this. And I'm not going to be able to go through the whole thing, but because there's at least 27 verses uh, uh, in, this, in this chapter here. But uh, starting in verse 11, he says, he saw the city coming down from heaven, having the glory of God, having the glory of God, wow. 
Wow, remember when Jesus was uh, transformed? When he went in the mountain, uh, Peter, John, and James, I believe it was, they, 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 said, they were like so blown away and they didn't, Jesus turned so bright that, uh, wow, they were like, they just had to humble themselves and, and bow before him. And Peter said some things that were just off the wall. <laughs> He didn't know what to say. He didn't. Sometimes it's it's good just not to say some things, but uh, but uh, there was the glory of God around the Lord Jesus, and uh, and 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 so here it it says having the glory of God, the city, and let her, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And it had a great and high, it, it, and had a wall that was great and high, and it had 12 gates. And at the 12 gates, 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Then on the east, three gates, on the earth, three gates, on the south, three gates, on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And if you go to verse 15 through 27, it describes the size of the city, the foundation of the city, the gates, the colors, the glory, the majesty, and even those who are going to come in and go out of the city. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hallelujah. This city is prepared. In, this city is prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Wow. Ooh, there's something special about this. Praise God. Last night it was really something. Uh, I, we were like, we were so surprised because uh, the girls have always done a good job in decorations and so on. But man, when we came in here, this place was, was really, really looked nice. Really looked nice. Even the colors, even the, 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 the screens right now are, just, are all matching the same colors, right? And the tables were decked out really pretty and everything. And uh, wow, you think about this, you know, wow. Uh, there are some things that just are so beautiful. And, uh, and, and here he talks about a bride that is adorned, as a city that is prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The church is the bride of Christ. Yes. God has some great and amazing promises while we are here on this earth. The, the testimonies that we heard, those are God's promises. God's promises are yay, yay. Yeah. Yes, yes. God is, is faithful to his promises. He yeah. is always going to fulfill what he says. God, if we do what God says, God will do what he says. Amen. So we have great promises while we are here on earth. But God has a city, the new Jerusalem, a gift for his church. In other words, there's greater promises coming. Yeah. Amen. Jesus said it this way. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. Hallelujah. He's prepared this city, hallelujah, as a bride adorned for her husband. Hallelujah. The Lord told John to write, he said, right, for these are the true sayings of God. Hallelujah. Everything we do, everything we are experiencing in our relationship, our relationship with God today is amazing. I, every day it becomes more, and wow, it becomes more and more true, come, becomes more and more reality. Hallelujah. It is amazing. There's something about Listening to the word of God. Amen. There's something about listening to the word of God. These, uh, I, I sit here and listen to you guys, you brothers, you holy men of God, you, <laughs> you, you brothers that 
I, 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 I would say, wow, they're teaching things that we've always taught before. And yet it becomes more and more real all the time. Praise God. Amen. The reality of Hallelujah. it. Amen. God's word is true. God, yeah. God's word is life. And you can read a verse over and over. And 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 and, and then a little later, you, you, you read it again. And you get more and more enlightenment all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. So everything that we do, every everything we are experiencing in our relationship with God today is amazing. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He is our God. Yes. We are his people. Yes. And he dwells in us. Yes. You, he dwells in us. Yes. From the beginning of man's existence, God's desire has always been to have fellowship with and to dwell with man. Yes, sir. Amen. He dwelt with Adam and Eve in the garden. He dwelt in the tabernacle of Moses. He dwelt in the tabernacle of David. Yep. He dwelt in Solomon's temple. Yep. Then God came in flesh. Mm -hmm. He prepared a body. Jesus Christ was the temple of God on this earth. Amen. And finally, we as the church are the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. What a privilege. Yes. What an honor! Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 The Apostle Paul said, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Yes, sir. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Mm -hmm. Glorify Him where? In your body. Mm -hmm. Our body should glorify God. Yes. Yes. Our body should glorify God. Yes. From head to toe, our body should glorify the Lord. Oh, we should bring glory to God yes. in our body. Yes. And in your spirit Amen. our inward man our outward man we should glorify God in our body and in our spirit because they belong to God yes sir which are God's that's what the scripture teaches come out from among them be separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Wow. That is Bible. That is the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we are on this earth. Yes. We're supposed to see and understand this while we are on this earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John had a great, heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle the temple, the habitation, the dwelling place of God is with man. Amen. God dwells with us, in us today, when we experience the new birth. Yes. But in heaven, we're going to dwell with him as he is. Yes, sir. He's going to dwell with us. We're going to be his people. We will. He will be our God. Yes. Here we don't see him. But there we will see him. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Here we don't see him. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. But when we get up there, we're going to see him. Eyeball Hallelujah. to eyeball. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see him as he is. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. That's exciting. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Ghost is the seal of that complete redemption. Amen. Oh, lift your hands up and worship with me right now. Just, just lift your voice and worship Thank for a Jesus. moment. Thank hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, we sit in heavenly places today in Christ Jesus. We are in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the wonderful presence of the Lord. Everything we Hallelujah. are experiencing now is preparation for the future. Thank you, Lord. When we go to heaven, God is going to wipe away all tears. No more crying night when everyone is asleep. No waking up because you had a nightmare. No, 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 no. There could be no more funerals. Not have to go to any more funerals. No more funerals. They're over. Separation from loved ones. We're not going to feel the 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 the, the pain of sub, of separation. There's not going to be no more sorrow, no mourning, no grief, no more pain, no more sickness, no more disease. He that sat upon the throne said, "Behold, I make all things new." And he said unto me, "Write." For these words are true and faithful. Amen. What God says he's going to do. In Revelation 21 and 6, the Lord said, I'm going to give to him that is thirsty, that person that has desire and passion and that truly wants, that truly desires, that person that is thirsty and hungry, I will give from the springs of the water of life Freely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jesus told the woman at the, at the well, he told her, the Samaritan woman said, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst. Yes, sir. But whosoever drinketh of the water that, that I shall give him shall never thirst. Yes. But the water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. We are experiencing everlasting life today. Hallelujah. Every day as we draw near to God, we are experiencing everlasting life. We have received eternal life. The moment we came, we received Jesus. He came into us and this life is eternal life. Because the Holy Ghost is never going to die. It's amazing. We have some friends of ours that said their mama, their mom and dad were in the convalescent home together. They had, she had lost her memory and, and uh, couldn't remember the kids and, and he was going through the same experience he said, but there was something amazing about it because he said they didn't remember our names they couldn't they you know when we talked to them they couldn't remember things and so on but as soon as we would start singing songs as soon as we started singing gospel songs some of the old time music that they used to listen as soon as we started singing my mom and dad, they would start singing all the songs. And by memory, wow. by memory, they never forgot the songs. Hallelujah. And then my mom would begin to speak in tongues in the Holy Ghost. Couldn't remember anybody, didn't remember anything. But yet, when they started singing the songs of, 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 that we sing in worship and praise unto the Lord, they would begin to sing word for word. Amen. And I would read scriptures to my dad who was a preacher. And as I would read those scriptures, I would stop and he would keep going. Wow. wow. The power of the Holy Ghost that dwells in us is eternal. Amen. It does not die. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can draw out of the wells of salvation. How do you draw, draw out of the well?
Revelation 22 and 7, that was uh, Revelation 22 and 17, tells us that in order to inherit all things, for him to be our God, you'll need to overcome some things. Mm -hmm. You'll need to overcome the devil, the world, and the flesh. All right. And I got good news. You can do it. Yes, sir. You can do it. Yep. You can overcome the devil. You can overcome the flesh. You can overcome this world. Hallelujah. As you draw near to God, you automatically become an overcomer. You become a winner. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil can knock you down. But that doesn't mean he knocked you out. He may knock you down. You may have messed up yesterday. You may have failed yesterday in some things. But today's a new day. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. When the devil knocks you down, you 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 gonna stay down or are you gonna get up? The moment you get up, you are back in the battle. Hallelujah. And God has equipped you with everything you need to stay on top. Hallelujah. You are a winner. You are a champion. Hallelujah. Our God is the one that we look to. He's the one that gives us strength. He's the one that gives us victory. He's the one that gives us power. He's the one that gives us authority. He's the one that gives us ability. He's the one that gives us supernatural, miraculous strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. John wrote in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 12 through 14. I love, I like saying things like this. You know why? Because it's encouraging. And because that's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. I, I can talk about it. I talked to, when I first came to Rose, Rosenberg uh, two years ago. For months, all I preached on was victory. Amen. That's all I preached on. Remember Brother Reyes? That's all I preached on. Some people said, that's all you preach about is victory. For months, I preached on victory. As soon as I got here, I preached on victory, victory, victory. I believe in victory. Still believe in victory. I never stopped believing in victory. What do you want me to preach? Defeat? Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you do all you preach about is prosperity. What do you want me to preach? Poverty? Hallelujah. <laughs> God wants us to live a victorious, triumphant yes. life here on earth. And He's given us all the tools. He has given us all the all the armor. He has given us the weapons so that we can overcome. Hallelujah. And I say it all the time. The Lord has given us the blood, the word, the name, hallelujah, the spirit, praise God. And if that's not enough, hallelujah, he's giving you, he's giving you a helmet of salvation so that you can, your mind can be renewed. He's giving you righteousness, hallelujah. He's giving you truth. He's giving you the, the, the word of God. He's giving you faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's giving you prayer, praise, the angels, the gifts of the Spirit. What else do you want? Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord Jesus. John wrote 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 through 14. He says, I write unto you, little children. How many of you are little children? Amen. Oh, you don't want to be little children. You want to be big children. <laughs> John said, I write unto you little children. That's like cariño, no? Mijitos, right? <laughs> I write unto you little children. Why do you write to us, John? Because your sins are forgiven Amen. for his name's sake. Woo! Not for our name, but for his name's sake. Yeah. So that he gets, he receives glory and honor. Yeah. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Forgiven you for his name's sake. Wow. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. Thank God for the blood that washes white as snow. And then he says, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. You've known him. Oh, come on now. We need to know him. Yes. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the thought, in the beginning was the blueprint, in the beginning was the plan, and the thought, the blueprint, and the plan was with God, and the thought, the blueprint, and the plan was God himself manifesting himself in flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world didn't know him. 
But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. And then I write unto you young, you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. You have overcome the wicked one. Mm -hmm. I write unto you little children because you have known the father. Yeah. How many have a revelation? How many have an illumination? How many have an understanding of who the father is? Yes. So long have I been with you. Was it Philip? Thomas? So long I've been with you and you still don't know who I am. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Hallelujah. Ooh. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong. Because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you. Hallelujah. And you have overcome the wicked one. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Brother, if we're going to see Jesus, we have to be overcomers. We have to overcome. Yes. We have to overcome the devil, the, the world, and the flesh. And our greatest battle is the flesh. I see it. It's the greatest battle. And then, Revelation 21 and 8. The last scripture I'll read, and we'll stop. Praise God. Revelation 21 and 8. Verse 7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Wow. But the fearful, the fearful, and the unbelieving, you know, people don't realize fear is a is a is a devil. Fear is a devil. Fear will destroy your life. Fear will, will, will take you down. Fear will make you sick. A lot of people in the hospital are, are in the hospital that they're they're fearful. We want to talk about adultery and fornication. We're going to talk about the worst of sins, you know, the, 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 the worst of sins. But being afraid. But the fearful. Hallelujah. And the unbelieving. Wow. Mm. Wow. Hallelujah. Oh, you don't want to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is Savior, that He's Lord? Oh. Well, that's you, you, you condemn yourself. That nobody's condemning you. God is not condemning you. God is giving you an, an open door. Yeah. But it's up to you to believe it. If you don't believe it, then it's your fault. It's yes. nobody's fault. Yeah. But the unbelieving, you got to believe. Everything has to do with faith and believing in the word of God. Yes. Oh, Amen. Amen. You got to believe. If you don't believe, well, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yep. He that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. That's the Bible. Yep. It's all about believing. But he says, but he says, but the fearful and the unbelieving oh. and the abominable. Wow. Who is that? My God. They, 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 they stink in their spirit. Do things that they're not supposed to do. The murderers. Those that murder. Hey, listen. When you allow resentment and bitterness to get in your heart, you know what comes after bitterness and resentment? Start hating people. You're so bitter against somebody. Somebody did you, did you wrong somewhere. And you're so bitter and you just get resentment. And, and then, you know, it's like, get away from me. I don't want nothing to do with you. And, and after when you keep letting that spirit get a hold of you, then hate can get into your heart. And when you let hate get into your heart, that will bring murder. People hate. And it will bring murder. Can't allow those spirits to get a hold of us. That's why the Bible says we're supposed to forgive. Fearful, unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, and the whoremongers. I studied that later. I said, what is a whoremonger? I, I, I know I've heard of a whore. That's a woman that gives herself to the, to the flesh for the satisfaction of somebody, somebody's lust. 
but a whoremonger. What is a whoremonger? And as I read, it's a man who prostitutes his body mm. for the satisfaction of another man. Wow. Whoremongers. I didn't look into that. I didn't read that. I said, well, what is a whoremonger? What the hell? <laughs> Looked up that word in a while, hormone. Well, it's a man prostitute. Mm. Wow. Hormongers and sorcerers. Mm. Those who practice palm reading. You know, there's a, we have a couple of them. Every time we pass by the blood of Jesus, by the spirit of sorcery. Mm. All those that practice those magics, black and white and any other kind of magic that is not of God. All the, those whoremonger source and idolaters. <coughs> I said it last night. Philadelphia, they got crazy just because they won the pennant. Right? They went to the World Series. I read it. But they did some crazy things. <clears throat> the day they, they won, they went and did some dumb things. Why do you gotta be so excited and go to hurt people and do something wrong? Well, some people got shot last night. Because the game was over. I guess they were so disappointed they lost, I guess. I don't know. And people were, were shot at after the game. Wow. I thought, you, you mean you love that man so much or that team so much that you want to kill for them? You know, I was thinking about it. Some of these people that are getting involved in the, the political scene also. Oh, they give themselves so much to it that they have no time for God. There's so much time for, for going to the to the games. Game after game. And they can't come to church. Hello. Amen. That's idolatry. Yes, sir. When you put something before God, you know that you can even put your own children before God. Right? Right. I gotta take them here. I gotta take them there. I gotta get them involved in this. I gotta get them involved in that. Yeah. I mean, there's there's some things that we're not against everything. Hello, honey. I mean, I'm not I'm not that crazy. I'm not, you know, but but uh, you know, when you start doing that, you, that that happens. Yeah. That's idolatry. Anything that comes be, that you put before God, that you love before God, whether it be money or anything else. And this, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. The first death is your physical death or your spiritual death. And eventually it comes your physical death. There's an eternal death. Away from the presence of God forever, never, 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 never. Wow. Fire and brimstone, lake of fire. That is the that is the end of not being not, not being committed to God, and God gives us all an opportunity. I'm going to ask you all to stand.